Are your sprinklers stuck on right now? Hang on in just a moment, I'll show you what to do. Even if they're not stuck on, I'll show you how to prepare for such an event and how to help prevent that from happening in the future. Tom Lanier here with Sprinkler Pros. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the water shut off, why and how it gets stuck on, how to help prevent it from happening, how to be prepared, and how to prepare your tenants for an irrigation emergency. If your water is stuck on right now, it's most probably not your timer's fault, so you need to shut off the water supply to the sprinkler valves. Do you have a shut off valve? Most people don't know whether they do or don't, or even where it is, so I'm going to show you where it probably is based on your situation. I go in more detail on this in my video called All About Sprinkler System Shutoff Valves, linked above and down below. The first place you want to look is at the sprinkler valves. A group of more than one sprinkler valve is called a valve manifold, or manifold for short. Look for one of these gate valves or ball valves to the left or right of the manifold. If you see one there that seems to lead to the manifold, then turn it off. You may also have a backflow device like one of these. It's normally near the sprinkler valves or up by the street. The gate valve will take many turns to turn off if it isn't rusted tight. The ball valve just needs a quarter turn to shut off if it isn't stuck. If you don't see one of these, then look for one of these valve boxes to the left or right of the manifold. If your sprinkler valves are down in the ground in a valve box, then the shutoff valve might be in the box with them. Hopefully it's not covered in dirt or mud. If you don't find a shutoff valve near the sprinkler valves, are you sure this is the only manifold on your property? If you're still in the lurch, here is the next set of questions. Are you on municipal water, commonly called city water? Or are you supplied by the water company? If so, then you probably have a water meter and it's usually in a concrete box like this with a metal or concrete cover. Look for a shutoff device between the meter and the house side of the meter in the box. Turn that off with one of these tools called a meter key if you have one. If you don't have one, you can pick one up at your local hardware store or home center or through my resources page linked above or in the descriptions section. If there isn't a shutoff device between the meter and the house side of the box, then turn the only other shutoff device you see in the box, which will be between the street and the meter. Technically, that's the water company's shutoff device, but hey, when you're in a pinch, you got to do what you got to do. In some parts of the U.S., your shutoff may be in your basement. And so you turn the water off so turn, down in the basement. Yep, here it's in the basement, so turn the water off at the basement. If none of those scenarios apply, then are you on a dirty water system? By this I mean, is your water supply from a well, lake, pond, stream, or gray water? If so, there may be a shutoff valve at the source. By the way, if you are on one of these dirty water sources, you need to watch my video linked above and down below called Well Water for Landscape Irrigation. I show you important things to know about dirty water sources for irrigation systems. Be sure to come back once you've got that water turned off so you can learn the rest of this topic so you'll be better prepared next time. All right, did that get your water shut off? If not, it's probably time to call an irrigation tech or a plumber. An irrigation tech is going to have a better idea of what to look for and how to fix the sprinkler valve that's stuck on while he's there. Next, I'll explain why and how sprinkler valves get stuck on. First, I'll reiterate that when a sprinkler valve gets stuck on, the sprinkler timer is rarely ever the problem. 99.2.5% of the time, the problem lies with the sprinkler valve. Here is a typical sprinkler valve that gets installed above ground. 
It's technically called an anti-siphon valve, and this is what the schematic looks like. The important part that is common among anti-siphon valves like these and below ground valves called inline valves like these is this section here. This is where the action is. This is the diaphragm. It looks a little different between brands and models of valves, but the basic design is the same. All that to say this. Almost every time a sprinkler valve gets stuck on, it's because a tiny piece of debris has become embedded under the diaphragm and is now keeping the diaphragm from seating completely when the valve is turned off from the timer, so water continues to flow through. This is the same reason that water may be pooling around some sprinkler heads in your system long after the sprinkler system has gone through its cycle. The debris can be as small as a grain of sand or could be a tiny pebble like this. It can be pieces of rust from your old piping. If that's the case, then this will continue to happen until you replace that old rusty piping. When you do replace it, it would be good to replace the piping with copper or PVC piping if you can. If you're on a dirty water system, then crud from the water will continue to clog the valves unless you put in a filter upstream from the sprinkler valves. It should be installed near the water source if possible. You can see an example of a filter assembly on the well water for landscape irrigation video mentioned before and linked below. Other things that can get stuck under the diaphragm are pieces of PVC glue, Teflon tape, and old diaphragm nuts that have broken off. I've seen all of these many times. If you take the bonnet off of the valve to inspect the diaphragm, be sure to flush the valve if possible to force out any debris that may be floating around in the pipes. This is no guarantee that you'll flush out your culprit, but it's a best practice. Also, be sure that if your sprinkler valve is down in the ground, that you think twice about flushing out the line. Here's why. Unless you dug out the valve box and left a substantial cavity under the valve for the water to flood when you turn on the water, you're going to have mud float right back down into your sprinkler valve, which will probably ruin your day. I'll probably address that in another video. While you have the diaphragm out, Check the inside of the valve body to see if there are any hairline cracks where the diaphragm seats. Sometimes you can't see it if there is water in the valve because the light reflects off the water. This crack is enough to keep the valve from closing. If after cleaning the diaphragm with a repurposed toothbrush or replacing it, your problem persists, then the next thing to check is the solenoid. This is rarely the issue, but sometimes the plunger gets stuck up inside the solenoid housing. Be sure the water supply is still turned off before taking the solenoid off. If you can unscrew the solenoid from the valve, be sure the plunger and o-ring don't fall out. Rainbird and Hunter solenoids don't have a plunger to fall out. Also, check the port to the bonnet under the solenoid to be sure there's nothing clogging it. If none of these things seem to be an issue, then the last possibility is that a small piece of debris is up inside the bonnet, and if that's the case, there's nothing to be done but replace the bonnet and all its guts, or replace the entire valve. If after replacing the bonnet the problem persists, then it's almost always a hairline crack in the body of the valve, and you may not see it until you remove the valve to replace it. That concludes the why and how. Now let's learn how to help prevent it from happening. I will preface this section by stating that even brand name sprinkler valves can get stuck on. Why? Because, as I've just described, it rarely has anything to do with the valve itself unless it's an old valve and the diaphragm has fallen apart or the body has cracked and that is very rare. If the body cracks, it's almost always from the water pressure being too high. The problem is almost always debris that has embedded under the diaphragm or in a port of the bonnet. People's typical knee-jerk reaction when something happens to the valves is to replace the valves. But if debris is the issue, then the real problem hasn't been addressed and may reoccur with the new valves. I've seen this happen too. 
All that to say, the best prevention to help avoid sprinkler valves from getting stuck on is to take measures to filter impurities from the water before the water reaches the sprinkler valves. But you cannot guarantee that a sprinkler valve, even a brand new sprinkler valve, won't get stuck on. There is a device that you can have installed that can alert you or your property manager when there's a problem, and I'll discuss that in a moment. This is how to do your best to prevent a valve from getting stuck on. One, if you're on a dirty water system, be sure you have a filtration device upstream from the sprinkler valves and be sure it's cleaned regularly. Two, if the water piping upstream from the sprinkler valves gets compromised in any way, such as a pipe break, then close the shutoff valve to the irrigation system until you can take measures to flush the system. Three, when the sprinkler valves get worked on or replaced, be as careful as possible to keep debris from falling inside the piping. Here's the device I just mentioned that can alert you or your property manager if there's a problem. It's Hunter's HC flow meter. It's available for three quarter inch, one inch, inch and a half and two inch piping. It is installed before your sprinkler valves. For this flow meter to work, you must have a compatible Hunter HydroWise controller installed. This flow meter can talk with your HydroWise controller wirelessly as well with an optional wireless kit. Be sure to click the link above or down below to see the video before purchasing the HC flow meter and read the installation documentation since it must be installed within certain logistical parameters. Here are three QR codes that you can use to read more about it. Simply pause the video to snap the codes. You can purchase the HC flow meter from my resources page linked down below along with the HydroWise timer and optional irrigation valve to use in tandem with it. Choosing the wrong model may cause the HydroWise controller to create false alerts in the software. Since you've learned that it can happen at any time, would you agree that it's best to be prepared? Here's how. Be sure that you have a shutoff valve for your entire irrigation system. You may have one shutoff for the entire system, or you may find it better to have one at each valve manifold. Either way is fine. See my video about shutoff valves in the Anatomy 101 series linked below. Be sure you have that in place and that you keep it accessible. Be sure that each responsible person on the property knows where the shutoff devices are and how to use them. In a moment, I will talk about two free downloads that can help you be prepared. Whether you own or manage rental houses, apartment complexes, and or Airbnbs, be sure the tenant or a responsible person on the property is made aware of the shutoff valve and how to use it. Be sure the shutoff valve is tested at least once a year so that you are certain that it will work when needed. If it's a metal handle, use a lubricating spray on it during each inspection to keep it limber. I have a couple of free downloads to help you and your tenants be prepared. The first one is a station ID sheet that has places on it to write where the sprinkler timers are on each property, along with where the sprinkler valves and shutoff devices are. You keep a copy. The property management company gets a copy, and the tenants get a copy in their sign-up paperwork. The other document is an emergency readiness sheet that explains how to deal with an irrigation system emergency. This gets provided to the same parties. You can download these free resources through the free downloads link below. Hey, since we're on the subject of sprinkler valves, are your anti-siphon valves protected from the sun or from dogs chewing on the wires? Or would you prefer to not see them for aesthetic reasons? Here's an easy solution that we've come up with called Josh's Boxes. It's a simple DIY project that you can customize and Josh walks you through the entire process in video and in written form online. Click above or down below to check it out. My worst irrigation emergency was when I was kneeling over a live two inch water line when it burst in my face. I was instantly drenched and stunned for a moment. Good thing I knew where the shutoff device was. What irrigation emergencies have you encountered? Let us all know in the comment section below. I hope this video has helped you through a jam or at least taught you how to be prepared for a possible future irrigation emergency. If so, please like, subscribe, and share this with others that could benefit from it. 
Thanks for watching.